booktube Sarah here and welcome to my channel today I'm coming to you with my weekly reads for May the 25th through the 31st um, of 2019 of course uh, happy first day of June everybody um, it is the first day of the summer romance book bingo yay isn't that exciting um, before I jump into this video I do want to thank every single person who has chatted and is participating and has been leaving comments and everything for the summer romance book bingo i'm super super excited it's going to be absolutely fantastic i am i am so thrilled this year i mean yet last year was a lot of fun but i really think that this year it's it's uh become something even bigger and i'm super super excited i've seen a lot of videos pop up in my feed of people doing their tbrs i will be watching those over the weekend so super excited about seeing those um if you know what I think that's what I'm gonna do so by the time you guys see this video there will be another thread up in the summer romance book bingo group which will, of course I will link in the description box below and um, it will be post your videos so if you guys have any videos that you've done on booktube that relate to the summer romance book bingo I'm gonna leave that thread open so you know you guys can go check them out maybe find some new channels that you don't know about I think it'll be a lot of fun and yeah I cannot wait it's going to be a great great summer we have a lot of fun I have a lot of fun things coming up this summer in regards to the channel um, originally what I had done well let me backtrack so I've been thinking over the last like few weeks, I thought maybe I'll vlog again for the summer. Maybe I will do go back to doing weekly vlogs just for the summer for the summer romance book bingo. But I and I posted a, um, a poll on um, my community of the channel uh, Thursday night, I think it was. And I got a lot of votes on it. A lot of people wanted vlogs to come back and I was also going to do Friday reads. I got thinking about it a bit more today and I realized that I don't. I don't know what this summer is actually going to hold um, for me and for the family and stuff like that. So I don't want to commit to that when I cannot be 100% certain that I can follow through on it. So what I'm going to do though, because I did see pop up in my feed this morning, the lovely Karen over at Rather Be Reading, and of course I will link her channel in the description box below as well. She is, she also stopped doing the weekly vlogs and she's kind of doing like, a not she's not calling it a weekly wrap-up but like a wrap-up of so many books or of so many days of all the books that she's read so kind of similar to what I'm doing and you know where where you're just kind of sitting down to wrap up the books but then she posted this morning she did a vlog of the entire month and it was more just the out and about not the reading and I kind of love that idea so I think I might do the same because truth be told I mean I go to work I come home I read you know, watch booktube, knit, go to bed, get up and do it all over again. And even my weekends don't tend to be terribly interesting. We don't go out and do a lot of stuff. You know, we're pretty much homebodies. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is vlog, um, do little snippets here and there and insert pictures and stuff. And then at the end of every month, I will do a monthly, like a non-reading vlog. Um, so I hope that works for you guys. I hope you like the idea. Um, you know, when I mentioned Friday reads, in a way, these videos are kind of like a Friday reads um, or a Saturday reads because it I, I let you guys know what I'm reading over the weekend and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I again, I because I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, nobody really knows what's going to go on, but um, with what's going on with the family right now, it's, it's a little bit up in the air and I don't want to commit to something that I might not be able to follow through on. So these seem to be a little bit easier. Um, for me, so that's why we're going to continue with this. But like I said, it is, well, I'm filming this on the 31st um, on Friday night, but um, of course you guys will see it on Saturday, so happy June as well. Um, and I finished eight books this week, you guys. Was it eight? I think it was eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, hold on. Was it nine? Can I count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it was eight. <laughs> I was right the first time. So I did finish eight books. I finished um, my monthly challenge. I finished all the books that I had set for myself to read this month um, in my TBR. So I'm super stoked about that. And uh, yeah, so let's get in and start talking about the books so this doesn't end up horribly long because the very first book that I'm going to talk about, I am going to rant about because, oh my gosh, you guys, this book was bad. <laughs> I'm sorry and I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate on book two because I know this book is loved by so many people so the first book I want to talk to you guys about is maybe someday by Colleen Hoover 
This is a new adult contemporary romance. It is book number one in the Maybe series. This was narrated on audio by Zachary Weber and Angel uh, Angela Goethas, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. Originally published in 2014, average rating of 4.30 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one a two star. And the only reason it got a two star is because I didn't DNF it, because I thought about it several times. I pretty much, it was a train wreck and I wanted to see how the author was going to work it out in the end. If you guys are unfamiliar with what this story is, um, and like I said, this is beloved quite a bit, obviously on booktube. I mean, it's got an almost four and a half star rating on Goodreads. I am very much the minority, but when I was looking through ratings and reviews after I had finished this book on Goodreads, I realized that it's not just me. There were a number of people who felt the same way about this book that I did. So, fair warning in advance, there are going to be spoilers in this little mini review because I feel these are things that need to be talked about. <laughs> I do not know why a book that condones cheating is rating so highly. And I, I you know, like I, I kind of made a face when I said new adult. Yes, it is new adult because the characters are in college. Um, so I'll give it that as that, um, that age group. It's meant for the new adult age group. This is not a romance. This is a book all about cheating, in my opinion. So the premise of this story, uh, it's about what the characters' names are, Sydney and Ridge. And um, she, at the very beginning of the book, it's her 22nd birthday, and she finds out that her boyfriend of two years has been cheating on her with her roommate. And, you know, she kind of runs out of the house and blah, blah, blah. Well, prior to this, um, I guess she lived in like a complex where you can see each other's balconies and stuff like that. And Ridge, who she didn't know his name at the time, would sit out on his balcony and he would be playing his guitar. And, you know, she kind of like, you know, kind of really got into the music, but he never sang or anything like that. And, you know, then she gets kicked out and, or not, she, she doesn't get kicked out. She leaves voluntarily uh, the apartment and she ends up, through a series of circumstances, living at Ridge's apartment. Ridge has a girlfriend. He has had a girlfriend for a long time, since high school, with the same girl. She starts to, to have feelings for Ridge, which is fine. You know what? That's, that's not my issue. That's, you know, it happens. It's the fact that she pursued it knowing damn well that he had a girlfriend and the fact that he let her. So during the course of the book, and again, I'm going to get into spoilers, so I do apologize if you have not read this book and you don't want any spoilers. There, there will be links in the description box below where you can click right away to the next book that I'm talking about so you can jump this so you don't have to listen to this. Um, but they essentially start a very emotional relationship. And regardless if there was anything physical involved, it was cheating. End of the day, it was cheating. He was pretty much saying to her, you know, or having these thoughts and putting them down on paper that if he didn't have a girlfriend, he would have been all over her. But he felt like this, he, I, I, I love her, so how can I love her and love you at the same time? No, I'm sorry. If it's cheating. At the end of the day, that's what it was. And this book made, made me so angry, so angry. So those of you who have read Colleen Hoover, please don't tell me that all of her books are like this because this book was horrible. I mean, I gave it two stars, like I said, because I didn't DNF it. The other reason that I gave it two stars was because the writing itself was actually quite good. Um, the story, you know, the plotting, the, uh, the characters themselves, neither one of which I, I, there was no character in this book that I actually liked, except I think his name was Warren and he was the roommate, um, of Ridges. And so he was like, they were all, cause the, th the three of them, plus another roommate named Bridget and the four of them were all living together in this four bedroom, uh, apartment. And Warren's the only character I like because he pretty much told Sydney, what are you stupid? He's got a girlfriend and was calling Ridget as well. Like he was the only sensible character in the whole book, in my opinion. And even that was a stretch because he was kind of a bit of a, a, a goof off and, and stuff like that. But still, at least he was the voice of reason within this messed up relationship. And then, oh my God, the part that made me so angry is that when Ridge's girlfriend finds out that all this has been going on because the idiot left it all like in, 
Facebook messages on his computer, you know, I'm not, believe me, I'm far from condoning cheating. Yeah, it's, it's an absolutely horrible thing. And if you are having issues in your relationship and you feel the need that you need to, 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 to be with somebody else, break up your relationship first. Don't be that person. And, you know, as I think all of us have been there at one point, one point or another in a relationship with somebody else and, you know, that person, the other person steps outside of the relationship. All of us have either been there or have known someone who's been there and you know what it's like. It's horrible. So this poor girl finds this out and pretty much excuses it. I was disgusted, absolutely disgusted. You know, oh, I have always felt that you were smothering me anyway. She gave him a flipping out. I was, it, there was no resolution. And the thing that gets me at the very end, you know, again, this whole thing is spoilers, so sorry if, you know, um, but I did warn you um, that, of course, Ridge and Cindy end up together at the end. Guess what, sweetheart? He's going to do it to you, too. Because once a cheat, always a cheat. Leopards don't change their spots. You know, like, I, I think, <laughs> I know this is a bad example because it's like a celebrity and celebrities are, like, held to, like, a different, um, a different place as opposed to us, you know, normal folk. But <laughs> I think of Blake Shelton. I am a big fan of Blake Shelton's work. I really, really like his music. I cannot stand him as a human being. Um, because, for those of you who might not know, who might not be fans of country music, um, I've been a fan of his, like, since way back in the day. So, he married this woman. It was, like, his high school sweetheart or something like that. And, you know, they were married. And um, then he started to make it big. And he started to go out on tour. And the first time I saw him, actually, the only time I saw him in concert was during his first album when his first album was out and not long after that he started touring with Miranda Lambert he cheated on his wife with Miranda Lambert and then of course split up with his wife married Miranda and you know everybody thought oh it's so cute it's so sweet no it's not yeah I'm sorry <laughs> he's a cheat and then not that long ago he does it to Miranda with Gwen Stefani you know, like, I mean, Miranda kind of should have seen it coming because he did it, you know. I, I, I just, sorry, my watch is going off. This book just made me so, so angry about so many things, probably because I have dealt with this personally with my ex, like, back in high school. And as the other party, it is an absolutely horrific feeling. And the fact that they are, that this book almost makes it seem okay, and it's not okay. You know, again, regardless if there was anything physical that happened, an emotional cheat is the exact same thing, in my opinion. So anyway, that's my rant about that book. I'm not talking about it again. I will not be continuing on with this series. Um, and yeah, so please let me know. Those of you who are Colleen Hoover fans, please tell me that her books are not all like this or give me a recommendation of another one to read, maybe to, because as of right now, I don't care for her as an author if this is the kind of books that she writes, if that makes sense. So. On to better things. Um, the next book that I finished, actually, you guys, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Hold on. I gotta reach. Is da, 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 A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. I finished this, you guys. All right, so what did I what did I write down about it? Why a fantasy novel, of course. Um, book number one in the A Court of Thorn and Roses series. Um, published originally in 2015. Average rating of 4.26 stars on Goodreads. This has a lower star rating than maybe someday. That makes me really angry. <laughs> Not by much, but by a bit. I give this three and a half stars. So three stars is a completely average rating for me. Three and a half stars. I did enjoy this one. Did I love it? No. Um, the reason I didn't is because it's not my typical type of book. I am not a fantasy reader in general. I, you know, um, the whole world building aspect and all those things and stuff. I just, it's, it's not, it's interesting. Don't get me wrong. It's well written. I, I, I loved the different characters and I thought it was extremely creative and I thought it was fun. It was violent. I'm generally not one who enjoys a lot of violence in a book. There's a lot of people who are killed in this. The scene with the fairy that had its wings ripped off was brutal to read. Um, the beginning of the book where she kills the wolf and the deer. I mean, granted, I get there for food, but still, I just, it wasn't 100% my thing, 
but I still found it highly entertaining and I'm glad I read it. At the end of the day, I'm really glad that I read it. Will I continue with the series? Yes, but I might try the next ones on audio um, just because for me, the thing is, the, one of the reasons, and you guys are going to laugh at me, one of the reasons I don't read a lot of fantasy or sci-fi is the names. I, I, I stumble over names. Like, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, I, when, when I come up, it's like when you're reading and you come to a word that you don't know and you, like, stumble over it trying to figure out what it is. I feel the same way with names in fantasy books. And especially when some of the names are very similar. Um, so that's why I'm thinking on audio might work for me because... It, um, it might be easier for me with the names and stuff like that. But no, I did enjoy it. I, I found it, I thought it was a lot of fun and I'm really glad that I read it. If you have not read this yet and you know, you don't, and you like that kind this kind of thing, I recommend it. My, my only other caveat of this is, is it a YA? Mm, don't think so. I honestly think this would be classified more as the new adult because there is adult content in this book. Um, so yeah, so that one was good. The next book that I finished was His Bodyguard by Lois Greeman. This is a contemporary romance novel, of course. Um, book number 64 in the uh, Harlequin Love and Laughter imprint. Um, published originally in 1999. This was one of my 40 years of Harlequin projects. Sorry about the glare on the book. Um, 3.18 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one three stars. Did not love this one, but it was cute. I know that this one is available as an ebook if anyone is actually interested in picking it up. Um, Harlequin did a big publish, like a republish of a bunch of their ebook of their older books as ebooks, and a, like you'll see the cover of the book, and then around it will be this red like frame, and it'll say like best of the '90s or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so it is available as an ebook, but this one is about uh, Brianna and Nathan, and Nathan is a major country music star, and he's been kind of getting some threatening letters, and some incidents have been happening. So his manager decides to hire him a bodyguard. So they bring in all these big buff, you know, kind of WWE wrestler looking dudes. And then she comes in too. And Nathan hires her because it's of course the only female. He thinks she's pretty cute. And, but she's taking this job very, very seriously. Now she isn't actually a bodyguard. She works for the bodyguard agency that hired, that she kind of came from, but she is the secretary. And, but she's always wanted to be out in the field, but she's this tiny little pixie of a thing, you know, and I'm not saying that women like that can't do this kind of a job or men for that matter, but you know, she's not exactly the first choice. Let's put it that way. So of course his entire purpose is to try and get her into bed. Um, I really liked her. I liked her quite a bit. She was really spunky, you know, had a great attitude. She just wanted to do her job and just to prove that she was just as good as anybody else to do this job. And he just wouldn't take it seriously. Like, he just thought she was playing a game. Um, my other issue with it is that I found him to be very, very sexist. Uh, you know, I mean, granted, this was written in 1999, so things have changed quite a bit, you know, in attitudes within romance novels, within books. But it was still a little bit over the top, um, and he was just so perfect, of course. And this is how they were always written back then. She was so pretty. He was so handsome. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but it was a love and laughter, which means that they are, um, they do contain quite a bit of humor in these books. And, um, so it was funny in parts. It was like a romantic comedy. It was cute. It was fun. It was a very, very quick little read. You know, again, if, if you have, you know, the extra two bucks or whatever, and you want to read it, pick it up, um, as an ebook. It, it was entertaining. I liked it. Um, the next one that I read, oh guys, I love this book. A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. This is a contemporary romance novel. Book number two in the Reluctant Royals series. It was narrated on audio by Karen Chilton. I believe Karen Chilton narrates all of Alyssa Cole's books and she is fantastic. I love her narration. Um, this is this was published in 2018. Average rating of 3.94 stars on Goodreads. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. I gave it four stars. Excuse me for the hiccups. I love this so, so much. So this is the story of Portia and, Tra and Tavish. Travis. Tavish, McTav no, like McTavish, but Tavish. So um, I didn't know anything about this book going into it. I put this one on hold at my library on audio and it came in and I had lots of extra listening, audio listening time this month. So I, as you guys are aware, I got a bunch of extra audio books in that were not on my TBR. And this one came up and I was so, so stoked about it. Now I've got the first book I'm still waiting on, 
but it's okay. These ones can be read out of order. You, you find out, of course, the couple that ends up together from the first book, but you, as I've always said about romance novels, and I'll continue to always say it about romance novels, the couple that meet in the first chapter is the couple that ends up together in the end of the book. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, Portia is our main character and she ends up, uh, she wins this apprenticeship to learn how to make swords in Scotland. And so she heads to Scotland and she meets Tavish. And Tavish doesn't really want her there. It was his brother who kind of brought her in for this interim internship. And she's trying to figure out ways to make his company grow and to, you know, um, expand the business and things like that. And she's got all these great ideas and he just wants to be left alone to make his swords and let him do his thing. Um, and then it turns out she finds out while doing some research that he's actually a duke. Um, so the story kind of goes from there. I don't want to give much more than that away because I totally went into this book blind and it was so, so good. This book does get quite hot and spicy. That's atypical for Alyssa Cole, uh, but very, very well written. I loved the characters. The characters in this book are just, they literally jump off the page and the narration on this. I mean, Karen Chilton did a bang on Scottish accent. It, she was no Davina Porter, who does the Outlander series, but still highly enjoyable. She did an amazing, amazing job. This is such a fun romp, and these are the kind of books that remind me why I love romance novels so, so much. Alyssa Cole is fantastic. She is a new favorite author of mine. So I've got the first book and the third book on hold at the library on audio. The first one I should actually get in June. The third book might be a bit more of a wait because it just came out and there's quite a long wait time on it, um, but that's okay. It'll be totally worth the wait. I recommend any of her books. They are all fantastic. There is a novella that comes between book two and book three that I'm probably going to try and read after I read book number one so then I can kind of get caught up in the series and then go from there. But yeah, if you guys love contemporary romance, definitely give this one a shot. You know, a lot of people joke around about book boyfriends, you know, like that's a very... And I'm not generalizing anybody for saying, you know, for this. Um, I'm a little bit too old for that, to be completely honest. But if I had to have one, it would be Tavish. Probably because he's actually older. I think he's in his early 40s. So, you know, I, I don't have to feel like a creeper. <laughs> Thinking that he's, you know, for a fictional character, a pretty, a pretty decent guy. And I really, really liked him. Um, the next book that I finished was... Abby and the Bachelor Cop by Marion Lennox. Um, it was in this anthology that I read it out of. This anthology is called An Unexpected Rescue. Um, and this is another contemporary romance, of course. Uh, book number one in the Banksia Bay series, Harlequin Romance number 4241, uh, originally published in 2011, average rating of 3.61 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one three and a half stars. This book was a lot more emotional than I originally anticipated it to be. So... This one as well, though, the reason it didn't get a higher star rating is because this one also contains cheating, which, I, I, again, there's places that Sarah draws the line. That is one of them. Um, the premise of this book is about a woman by the name of Abby, and she is engaged to this guy named Philip, who is pretty much a real stick in the mud. And she is living in her hometown. Now, this takes place, I believe, in Western, Aust Western Australia. So if you are looking for a book for the summer romance book, bingo. That is set in a country that you do not live in, Western Australia. Um, and she um, she's engaged to this guy. And the wedding is like nine days away. Now, she has been having second thoughts, right? So, again, I am not condoning this. I would never condone this. And she is living in town with um, the guy that she used to date briefly in high school named Kier. Kerr? Kerr, excuse me. The beginning of the book... And there's a traffic accident while she's on her way to work. She's a lawyer, so she's going to court. And um, a car hit a truck, uh, like a, a dog pound truck. And Kerr, who is the uh, uh, town policeman, kind of gives her one of the dogs and says, take it to the vet. He has to be put down, so take him over. Now, he was being put down because no one would adopt him, and the shelter was overrun, which immediately tugged at my heartstrings. That's why I'm saying this book was a lot more emotional than I originally anticipated. She couldn't do it. She couldn't have him put down because there was nothing wrong with him. It's just that nobody won wanted him. The dog's name, hold on, wait for it, was Kleppy. K-L-E-P-P-Y. Kleppy. Odd name for a dog, you might be asking. Yes. I thought maybe it was some sort of an Australian slang thing, but it's not. It was short for kleptomaniac. <laughs> the dog steals stuff. <laughs> 
So that was kind of a great bit of humor that was injected within the book. Now, outside of that, there is a tragedy that ties Abby and Kerr together along with Philip. And Philip ends up being not the greatest guy ever in the world towards the end of the book, but I don't want to give too much away. But like I said, there is a small amount of cheating in here. Kerr kisses Abby twice while she's still engaged before she breaks off her engagement with Philip. I don't agree with that. I, I think it could have been omitted from the book and it still would have been, you know, he, you know, again, he can be pining for her and she can think he's cute, but I don't know. It's almost like, where do you draw that line kind of an idea, right? So yeah, well, that part of it, I didn't 100% agree with. It was still a really, really good story, a very heartfelt story. If you are a dog person, like this is part of the, whoops, sorry for shaking the camera. This is part of the Must Love Dog series from Harlequin. They are reprinting these, these books in like bind ups. So I'll put the original cover of the book up here because it's very similar to this cover, but just so you know what you're looking for, um, in case you don't want to get the whole bind up, but both books were really, really cute. Um, but if you're a dog lover, you will really like this one. Kleppy steals the show in this book, in my opinion. He steals a lot of things in this book. <laughs> but it was really, really adorable, and I really did like it. Um, next book that I finished was Marianne and Too Many Boys by Anne M. Martin. This is, of course, a middle grade fiction novel. Book number 34 in the Babysitter's Club series, published originally in 1990. Average rating of 3.55 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one three stars. I didn't like this one. Again, this one also contained cheating. Like, really, people? Like, was just this, was this the week? I, I blame the Colleen Hoover book for starting this horrible trend. So, in this book, Marianne and Stacy go back to Sea City, New Jersey, with the Pike family, um, Mallory's and her siblings and their parents. And they're there on vacation for two weeks, and Marianne and Stacy are mother's helpers. And while they're there, they run into two boys that they met last summer, when in reality it was like however many books ago. I think it was book seven or eight was Boy Crazy Stacy, and that was the first time that they were in Sea City. And they run into the same two boys, and they are also mother's helpers over this two weeks for another family. So Marianne is dating Logan. She has a steady boyfriend at home, but yet she still goes out on dates with Alex. Now, nothing happens between her and Alex. Like, there's no, there's nothing physical that happens, but she is doubting you know, do I really care for Logan this much when I'm having this much fun with Alex? Well, it turns out, spoiler alert, people, that Alex also has a girlfriend back home. Well, then why in the flip are you taking this girl out on dates? You know, it's one thing to hang out as, and I'm not saying that boys and girls can't be friends together. Or <clears throat> if you're in a relationship with someone, no matter what sex that person is, and you are going out to hang out with someone of the same gender or a different gender, or it doesn't even matter, you know, boys and girls can be friends even if one's in a relationship and one's not but when you're taking that person to a very romantic restaurant and you're getting all dressed up certain things are kind of implied even when you're 13 years old you know <laughs> like not that it's gonna go there but does that make sense so yeah so I mean yeah I like this book it was kind of fun um I really like the vacation aspect of the story I thought that part of it was really really cute but, you know, again, the, the whole cheating, cheating, you know, aspect of it in this book, I could have done without. So only two more books to talk about, you guys. The next one was another book that I did not have on my TBR, but this is another one that came in from the library that I had put on hold. I kind of went through and just put a whole raft of stuff on hold at the library on audio to eventually get to. Um, because I'm trying to decrease the audio on my TBR so I can leave room for more books to to kind of pick them up as the month goes on, like coming in from the library and stuff like that. Um, and this book I picked for two reasons. One, I loved the cover. I thought it was really, really cute. And for and the second reason is because the title is one of my favorite albums from the time that I was in high school. And that book is called August and Everything After by Jennifer Salvato uh, Detorsky. And this is a YA contemporary romance, so this is a, a fun little YA novel. It was narrated on audio by Emily Lawrence, uh, published originally in 2018, average rating of 3.60 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one four stars. This book was really, really enjoyable. Um, this is the story of Quinn and Malcolm. And Quinn is 18 now, I think, and she has just graduated from high school. And she kind of doesn't want to, she doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She has had a string of bad luck when it comes to guys and men um, in throughout her teen years, like throughout her high school career. Um, it, it talks openly about the fact that she is not a virgin. 
Um, but this book, nothing adult happens in the book. So just so you're aware, um, if you are interested in reading it. But, you know, at what she, you know, had left her virginity to her high school boyfriend. And then kind of the crowning glory, if you will, is that she got caught in a car with her student teacher. Um, so he wasn't her teacher per se, but he was still a an authority figure or her teacher in, in sorts, even though he wasn't that much older than her, but still. Um, so she kind of doesn't want to know what she wants to do with her life. And her mother's really pushing her to find a career and figure out something to do. So she ends up going to spend the summer in, I think it's in New Jersey, um, with her aunt at this beachside community that they live in. And she has a couple jobs over the summer. She's working in a like an all ages kind of like club idea where they have live music and then also at one of those souvenir type stores. So while she's working at this club, she meets Malcolm and Malcolm was once a maybe a B list um, musician and he kind of, uh, well not kind of, a couple years earlier uh, his bandmates were killed in a car accident and he kind of had a very hard time coming back from that. He ended up um, going into rehab for drug abuse. Um, and, you know, so this book really does deal with some hard, hit, hard hitting issues. So him and Quinn <clears throat> strike up a friendship at first and then it kind of grows into something more. And, you know, she plays the drums. So he invites her to kind of play the drums with his new band that he's putting together. And they kind of spend the summer writing music and, you know, getting to know each other and dealing with life. He's dealing with the death of his bandmates a couple years ago. and. You know, with that whole thing with her teacher, or her student teacher, she also, her best friend died when they were 15, and she, Quinn has always blamed herself for her friend's death. This book deals a lot with, it, it, it does deal with suicide, um, it deals with drug abuse, it deals with death, uh, like death of friends, and, you know, drinking, and, you know, a lot of issues that I think teens are dealing with nowadays, and it was so well done. <laughs> My only complaint to this book, and you guys are probably going to, again, you're going to laugh at me. Um, you've probably laughed at me quite a bit in this video, but that's quite all right. That's why I'm here, for your entertainment. <laughs> Is um, the book was titled August and Everything After. And like I said, the name of one of my favorite albums from when I was a teenager and when I was in high school. It was the Accounting Crows album. And the song Mr. Jones is still one of my favorites. And Round Here was another great track off of that album. Um, for those of you who don't know this music, I highly recommend that you go check out both those songs because they are fantastic. But anyway, a lot of the music that they talk about in this book is older music. They talk about the Ramones and they talk about the Beatles and they talk about all these older bands because her aunt is kind of a, like on the youngish side and she's tattooed and she loves music. And when um, Malcolm's putting the band together, she wants to play the cowbell. <laughs> So she's a really fun and funky individual with this amazing like record collection and stuff. But never once, even with the title of the book being a Counting Crows album, they never once mentioned the band, that band, in this book anywhere. I was so disappointed. I'm like, how can you name the book that and not make reference to that song or that album anywhere within the book? I was a little disappointed. But Say La Vie, if you like YA Contemporary, this is an author I had never heard of before. Like I said, it caught my eye when I was looking at, at, uh, at my library's website. I really, really enjoyed this one, and I absolutely recommend it. And the last book that I finished this week is Only Yours by Susan Mallory. This is another contemporary romance novel, book number five in the Fool's Gold series. Um, this one was published in 2011. Average rating of 4.16 stars on Goodreads, guys. I gave it four stars. I loved this book. I think so far after book one. I, book one is still hands down my favorite book in this series. This will be writing in a close second place. This is the story of Montana and Simon. She is one of the triplets. Um, so the premise of the Fool's Gold series, it's essentially just a small town in the Sierra, Sierra Nevada foothills um, in California. And it's all about the characters that, you know, live in this town. So Montana is kind of the, the triplet who doesn't, again, much like a character in the last book, she doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. She has just recently figured out that she wants to work with therapy dogs. And during an incident at the very beginning of the book, um, she meets Simon, who is a surgeon, a very gifted, very gifted, um, I guess a plastic surgeon. Um, and he has come to Fool's Gold and he's there on like a three month stint, um, just kind of coming in, offering his services, and then he's going to head off to Peru. And he's very standoffish. It was almost a little bit, a little bit. Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Or what's the, what, what am I trying to, I had in my head earlier today. A Phantom of the Opera kind of an idea. In a way, in, but not in a creepy, stalkerish, you know, kidnap the girl kind of way. Um, he's badly scarred on the one side of his face. I'm not going to tell you why because it's revealed later on in the book. But, um, you know, he's very standoffish. He keeps himself away from people. He just wants to come in, do his work, and go. But he's brilliantly gifted at what he does. And he is working with burn victims in, uh, like, uh, burn victims, um, like children. And there's one little girl in this book who, it breaks your heart because this poor little thing, you know, was badly, badly burned. And they are trying to you know, make her better. And she's got a lifetime of healing. I mean, it's not, this poor thing will literally be scarred for the rest of her life. And it was, it was very, very difficult to read parts of this book. But working with the dogs and the therapy dogs and, you know, Montana brings these dogs into the hospital. Um, she brings them into nursing homes. She takes them to the library because it's over, the, the book takes place over the summertime. And little kids who are learning how to read, read to the dogs because they feel the dogs are not judgmental. The dogs are not going to point out what word you got wrong. They can just read a book to a dog and not be judged for it. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, I don't know. Do you guys know of any places that actually do that? Because I think it's brilliant. But anyway, of course, a relationship between Montana and Simon blooms. And it is wonderful. I really, really love this book. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So much heart. There was so much going on in this one. This one didn't feel frivolous to me. Um, not that some of the other ones did, but this just had so much meat to the story and that's what made it so so good and yeah I, I i love this series so very very much you can read these books out of order that's not a problem but yeah this one was absolutely fantastic so let's get on to what i am currently reading but excuse me while i have a sip of my water my um i went out and bought from david's tea um reusable drinking straws because i love drinking from straws and so i bought a pack of six and i think it was eight or twelve dollars and it comes with um, a, a like a cleaner to clean the straws, so that's kind of good. And in my David's Tea mug, which is actually very festive, if you can't tell he's wearing Santa hat. <laughs> I saw this, and I didn't get a chance to order it, and then they were sold out. And then my lovely friend Mandy gifted me hers because she didn't, she wanted it, but she didn't want it as much as I did. Because I really, really love flamingos, so I had to have this. So anyway, sorry, I'm just drinking water out of that. With ice, if you can't tell. It's not an adult beverage, I assure you. If it was an adult beverage, this video would be even more entertaining than it already is. So, what am I currently reading? Yeah, that's that'll be the now. I'll do a, uh, a, um, a live video where we all sit around and drink. That'll be fun. So, <laughs> what am I currently reading? Um, as of filming this, these first two books I have not officially started yet. But as of Saturday, tomorrow, I will have started them. So the first book um, is, of course, my next audiobook. These are all new books for June. I'm so excited. Is Roomies by Christina Lauren. I cannot wait. So I was saying to, I think it was Lindsay over at The Wandering Reader. She's one of our co-hosts co for the uh, the Summer Romance Book Bingo. And she said that she is also reading Roomies. Um, I, yeah, she's also reading Roomies. And I commented that in July, I plan on reading The Unhoneymooners for the book bingo. And then I'm thinking, because I, that will have put me at two Christina Lauren books for the summer, I might end off August with another Christina Lauren. And I think it might be my, my half-night stand. I don't know. Um, I have read Dating You, Hating You. And was there another one that by her that I have read? I can't remember the title. I'll put it right here if there is another one of hers that I've read. But if you guys can recommend one of hers that you guys have read that you think I should get to in, in August, I'm really thinking it's going to be um, it's going to be my favorite Half Night Stand, but we shall see. So anyway, I have not started this book yet, so I've got no thoughts on it yet. Of course, I will talk to you guys about it next week. My current ebook that I'm reading is Hot in Hellcat Canyon by Julie Ann Long. This is the first book in the Hellcat Canyon series, and this is our June read for the summer romance book bingo. This is the group read. Um, so those of you who are reading it along, you don't have to read it at the same time I do. Just as long as you read it in June, I will go into the group and I will start a thread for this if you want to go in and discuss. If you are going to talk spoilers, please do make sure you mark them as spoilers for everybody else. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to starting this one. Of course, I will talk more about it next week. And the other book, okay, let me grab my other books over here. So, um, my current 40 Years of Harlequin book is The Sheriff and the Email Bride by Liz Ireland and Stray Hearts by uh, Jane Sullivan. This is a Harlequin duets novel, which are two full-length novels in one book. 
Um, I am going to be reading both of them this week. I actually got quite a good chunk of this read. I am at about 100 pages in. Now by today I should be at this first one. I'm not, obviously. Um, but I can probably get this finished over the weekend. That's not a big deal. I've got no major plans. And pardon me with the hiccups. It's not like, you know, it's, it's a difficult, you know, read. But I am enjoying this first one, um, The Sheriff and the Email Bride. I haven't finished this first story yet. I'm finding our female lead is just a little flighty and I'm not sure how much I really like her, but we will see. She sounds like she's got something that happened to her in the past that's not being discussed and I'm interested to see exactly what it is that they're talking about. Um, uh, my current Babysitter's Club book is Stacy and the Mystery of Stony Brook by Ann M. Martin. Babysitter's Club book number, I think it's 34, uh, 34, 35, I can't remember. But um, essentially, uh, Charlotte, one of their babysitting charges, has come to stay with Stacy for a week while her parents are away. And there's this old abandoned house down the street that's being demolished, and it sounds like there might be ghosts there. So it's going to be a little bit of a spookier one, which is fun. And then the last book I want to mention, I don't know how much of this I'm going to get read this week. This is not anything that I feel like I have to finish. But I have in the bedroom, uh, in our bedroom, I have another bookshelf, a smaller bookshelf that is filled with these new agey, uh, witchy, pagany type books. I mean filled. I've got about 30 or 40 of different books. And I've read some of them. Most of them I have not. I've kind of been collecting them and I really need to get back to reading them. So I just picked one of these up the other night um, and I've been reading a little bit before bed. I'm not very far into it. This is Midsummer, uh, Rituals, Recipe and Lore for Lithia, which is the next Sabbath that is coming up. If you guys have been following me, you watch my cross stitch that there's one per Sabbath um, of the eight Sabbaths in the year. And this is Midsummer. So this is the summer solstice is what we are celebrating. So there's the wheel of the year in case anyone is interested to see it. Um, so like I said, eight different um, holidays, if you will, if you want to call them that. And yeah, I'm enjoying this so far. It's just kind of talking about traditionally how this used to be celebrated, you know, way, way back um, in the day. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, different correspondence. Um, I went through the old ways part of it already, how they would uh, have bail fires and they would jump over them or how this was the traditional time for couples to be married. And, you know, the traditions that kind of, that have even seeped our way into popular culture now. Um, and then the chapter I'm on is new traditions, like new ways that you could do it. And look at the graphics in this book, you guys. Aren't they gorgeous? I, I, I so badly want to like photocopy and color them because they're so pretty. Um, I know Shannon um, over at Shannon Riddler is working her way through this same series and she is not at this one yet but she's actually read more of these because I think she started either at Halloween at, at Samhain or at Yule. I don't know which one she started at. So I will be reading these kind of books as I go. I'll talk about them. Um, I know they're not for everybody. I know not everyone shares the same beliefs that I do or vice versa. But, you know, if there are any of you out there who, who do and you're interested, uh, I do recommend these books. I know Shannon's reading them off of Scribbit or Scribner or Scribbit or whatever you want to call it. Ribbit, ribbit. Um, <laughs> am I sure there's no alcohol in here? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> but I know that's where she's reading them. But I did buy each of them because they are super duper adorable and I kind of love having them on my shelf. So, yeah. So that's all that I'm currently reading. So I have a little book haul. I, I only bought five books this week. I'm pretty proud of myself, but let's jump into that next. So before I get into the book haul, let's open our next 40 Years of Harlequin book from 2001. We are officially into the 2000s, you guys. Only, what does that make? 17 more of these and then we get, so 17 more weeks until we get to the last 12 of the year. So yeah, because we are almost, well, we're at June, right? So we're almost halfway through this year, you guys. Can you believe it? We're five months through the year. I, I can't believe it. I really, really can't. It, this year is just flying by. Um, what have we got this month? Ooh, a Blaze book, you guys. We're getting hot and spicy. There's the cover. The Driven Snow, S-N-O-W-E by Kathy Yardley. This is actually a pretty tame cover for the Blaze books, let me tell you. So what does it say? She's shedding more than just her inhibitions. I don't write these, you guys. I just read them. Angela Snow, okay, so that's, well, is definitely driven. She's shifting gears and moving into the fast lane of life. 
and she's starting with gorgeous Josh Montgomery. Angela's claiming Josh for one night of no holds barred. Um, no more Miss Nice Librarian. Oh, it's going to be a librarian one. Um, she's going to make all of her fantasies come true, or rather he is. Uh, Josh Montgomery is known as the hot corporate tycoon who could find his way around the bedroom and the boardroom, of course, you know, he should put that on his resume. Um, but he's having trouble finding his way around how he feels about Angela. Um, uh, her sexy proposition shocks him, even if it is the sweetest deal he's ever heard. But will only one taste satisfy, satisfy his explosive desire? <laughs> it's getting, is it just me? <laughs> yes. These are, <coughs> excuse me, at the time that these were being published, these were the most adult of the Harlequin imprints. Now there's the Dare line, which is actually billed as erotic. These were erotic light, I want to say. Well, they were very, very spicy. They actually had quite a bit of a plot to it. Um, they pushed the boundaries ever so slightly in the adult content department. But um, I, I still really, really enjoyed these. I, I thought uh, most of these stories were really good and really fun. I am very disappointed that Harlequin got rid of these because I know that they were a favorite amongst a lot of people. And um, I mean, I don't mind the Dare line. It's just I prefer a bit more story to the adult content like these ones were. Whereas I find, and I'm, I've only read a handful of the Dare books, so I can't speak on all of them. But I find that they push the adult more than they push the story. That's just me. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one. It will be fun. Um, so into the book haul. I went to the thrift store the other day ex it, 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 to look for one book, essentially. And I came out with five. Because buy four, get one free. And I thought, well, why not? Um, because the one book that I did get... Um, well, yeah, I, I found the book. If I hadn't found the book that I was looking for, I wasn't going to go. Or I wasn't going to buy anything, excuse me. So the first book that I got, and I'll let you know which one it was I was looking for when I get to it, was Snowfall at Willow, Willow Lake by Susan Wiggs. Look at that gorgeous cover. Yes, this is really beat up. You can see the spine is cut, or like the front flap is like really bent. Um, and the corner's missing up here. But that cover is just stunning. This is not a UK trade paperback, which I thought it was. It's actually not. This was published by uh, Myra, uh, Mira Books, which is a subsidiary, of course, of Harlequin. This is gorgeous. I have read this book before. This is part of the Lakeshore Chronicle series. This is a fantastic, fantastic series. One of my favorite books. Like, if I, I have mentioned before, I really have to do it at some point, maybe over the summer. My top 10 books of all time, like my top 10 romances of all time. The first book in this series, Summer at Willow Lake, fits into that top 10 list. It's one of my favorites. But yeah, I just think this is absolutely gorgeous and I couldn't resist not picking it up. Toss that down there. The next one, I happened upon this one and I was like, ooh, I kind of love the cover. The Mar the Marquess, is it Marquis? Marquess and I by Ella Quinn. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous cover, you guys. Oh, I just love it. There's no step back to this, sadly. Um, but yeah, this one looks really good. Trouble is no match for a lady of the extended Worthington family, except when it comes in the form of the most irresistible gentleman. But that one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So the Worthingtons, it's part of this uh, a series called the Worthingtons, which I've never heard of. Although, why do I feel like I own a book in this series? That is highly possible. I, I own way too many books on ebook. <laughs> I potentially own this one on ebook. We shall find out. Um, but yeah, I got that one as well. Um, the next one... This is an old favorite of mine, and I've been looking everywhere for this edition. I bought a copy of this book on ebook, and I really, really wanted a print copy because this is one of, I'm trying to remember what some of the first ones were, one of the very first romances outside of that first duets novel that I read from Harlequin. One of the first romances that I ever read, and I have not reread it since, and I need to do that because I loved this book, and I want to see if I still love it as much with all the other romance reading I've been doing since. And that is Sugar Daddy by Lisa Kleypas. And this is the edition. Like, not this exact edition, but you guys know what I mean. It was essentially, this is the edition that I read. But actually in better condition than the one that I had. So essentially, um, this is the story of a two people from opposite sides of the tracks. She is from a trailer park. He is very well-to-do. And essentially, as the title suggests, Sugar Daddy. 
Um, but he is not... He's not a lot older than her. I think he's a bit older than her, but not a lot. Um, but yeah, I am looking so forward to rereading this one. I'm really, really happy I have this cover, this edition, because this is the one that's iconic to me, and I'm super excited. I saw it on, I, like, I, how could you miss that spine? And I saw it on the shelf at the thrift store, and I'm like, yes, you must come home with me. And then the entire reason that I went in there was to look for a copy of this book. I had a copy of this book for years and years, and I got rid of it when I had my big book purge. <laughs> the book purge of... 2016 <laughs> and I got rid of it I do have a copy of it on audio I don't think I have a copy of it on ebook and that's Outlander by Diana Gabaldon I bought this for the express purpose that we are doing a group read of this book in July and August so if anyone I had a lot of people come back and say they really really want to join in there will be an announcement video coming in the next few weeks that I will be talking about this but essentially we are reading this book over a two month span. I'm sort of taking this idea, I saw it on Shannon's channel, because I I don't remember who did it, who was hosting it, but she was participating in the Game of Thrones read along, where I think they were taking a couple months to read each Game of Thrones book. So we are gonna do the same. I looked at this book. It has got my friends, um, what's the page count on this one? I think it's, yeah, it's 850 pages. But if we read that, and I think it's 51 chapters, if we read that over an eight week period, it works out to being five chapters a week. And then the last week we need to read six chapters. I think that is absolutely doable. I will talk of course more about this when I um, do the announcement in a few weeks, but stay tuned. Um, for those of you who want to participate, we are of course starting with Outlander. I have read this book. This will be my fifth time reading it. Fifth time, fourth time. This will be my fourth time reading it. I've read it twice in print book format. And I've read it once on audio and it is unbelievable on audio. I mean, it's unbelievable to begin with. The audio just adds icing to the cake. This book is so super fantastic. Um, so uh, again, I'll talk more about the readathon or, or the read along, excuse me, when we get closer. So those of you participating in the summer rom romance book bingo, who like me have uh, the more than 500 pages square on your bingo card, this book will qualify because we will finish it by the end of August. So yes, so I'm looking forward to it. And if it's if it if everybody enjoys doing it and we have good participation and more people want to continue, we will continue on to Dragonfly and Amber next and then Voyager and whatever. So we will work our way through this series. I think there are eight books in the series. Um, so about over the next 16 months. So you guys know you're going to have me around for at least 16 more months. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I wanted to pick it up. But I am disappointed because I actually went in for this edition. I want the floppy trade paperback because this is going to be so much easier to read. And yes, I am actually going to physically read this copy of it. Even though I have a copy on audio and I think the audio is unbelievable. I, I, the thing is, if I fall behind on my reading for any reason, I can jump ahead and listen to the audio to catch up. But I wanted this big trade paperback edition, but I found this one of an echo in the bone, which, excuse me while I look, excuse me, teddy bear, stay, oh, I do have it, that black book at the bottom with the little sticker on it, that's this book <laughs> in hardcover. <laughs> But originally my plan had been to collect all of these in hardcover, but I kind of really like the floppy paperbacks a bit more. Yes, this is still a tome to carry around, and yes, the printing is still uber small, but I just think that this is just, it, they sit open nicer. Do you know what I mean? Like if I'm sitting at work and I'm reading this at lunch, for me to sit it on the desk, I don't have to hold it open. Does that make sense? And I just think that they're pretty looking. And I, I'm not a fan of the sh TV show tie-in covers as much as I love the TV show. Guys, Jamie, best casting decision ever. Ever. I prefer these covers because these are iconic. Do you know what I mean? So I am still going to try and hunt out a copy of Outlander in this edition. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled over the next month or so um, in um, thrift stores to see if I can find it. If push comes to shove, I might go ahead and order it from Amazon, I know, but that's okay. And then I'll just take that edition that I got um, and I'll drop it off at like the little free library at the bingo hall and somebody else can enjoy it. 
Um, but yeah, this is this is the kind of addition I was looking for, but I found this one of an Echo in the Bone, so I decided to pick it up, because like I said, I'm trying to collect all these. And the cool thing is, at the end of this, I noticed when I was looking through it, they have a preview of the Outlander graphic novel called The Exile, which is um, experience Jamie Fraser's side of the story illustrated in glorious color art. Guys, you got to see the artwork in this. It is brilliant. Hold on, let me let me find a good, like, look at the artwork. Is that not stunning? I so want to get this graphic novel now. Like, I, I really, really want... I want to see if my library has it. So, yeah, that opening scene where um, old What's-His-Face, uh, Jack Randall catches Claire, and then Jamie comes into the rescue. Yes. This is, this, this is going to be a fantastic read-along, I think, you guys. I, I Those of you who are intimidated by Outlander... Don't be intimidated. It is going to be fantastic and we will work through it together. So that is all I have for reading stuff and book stuff and that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you guys quickly my crafting and then I'm going to probably let you go. So I finished the hat and I left it all the way over there. I'm sorry. I promise I'll show it to you guys next week, but I did finish the hat with the pom pom, but it's not 100% finished yet because I haven't put the pom pom on yet. And I haven't woven my ends yet, so I will show you guys when it's all done next week. But because I finished the hat, I decided to cast on another pair of socks. Because I haven't did socks in a little while, I've been working on the hat instead. And I pulled some yarn out of my bag of yarn, of my bag of sock yarn, and I randomly pulled this shirt, and I'm so glad I did, you guys. <laughs> this is yarn from a company called Desert Vista Dye Works. I have knit with their stuff before. They do self-striping yarn, if you could not tell that. Um, so the yarn stripes in this pattern, that's what the ball looks like. And the colorway is called Puffins. Like the little, I'll put a picture of them up here if you're not familiar with what a Puffin looks like. I believe a lot of them are found on the east coast of Canada in like Newfoundland, Labrador, maybe, I, I, I almost said BC. BC is not the east coast of Canada. Um, PEI and stuff like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of puffins that live over there. But yeah, it, it's like the, the color of the bird, like the black and the white, and like their feet, and I think like their beaks. So yeah, I'm really loving the way this is knitting up. I'm knitting just plain vanilla sock because the striping is the pattern in my opinion. And um, I'm about halfway through the foot, so I'm motoring through on these and I'm really enjoying them. Um, and then the other thing I decided to cast on, because I already have two sweaters on the needles, so I said to myself, what you clearly need, Sarah, is another sweater on the needles. <laughs> I blame my friends. We were all talking about our Rhinebeck trip in October, which is in four and a half months, and I can't wait to go to see all my best friends. Um, and every year, uh, Rhinebeck, for those of you who don't know, is the New York Sheep and Wool. Um, it is held in Rhinebeck, New York, and it is the third weekend in October, I think, this year. And I have had my hotel booked since last October. Um, you do need to book it in advance. You might get lucky if you want to go and to find something in the area um, or if you live in the area. Um, but um, every year I have gone, I have knit a sweater. This will be my fourth year, my third year in a row, but my fourth year going. Because I went the first year, I skipped the next year, and then I this will be the third time now in a row. And every year I've knit a sweater. And yes, I have two sweaters on the needles, but neither one of them was the Rhinebeck sweater. So I decided to cast on a sweater because I've had this one to want to knit for a while um, and I finally decided to bite the bullet and cast it on. So this is a sock yarn weight sweater and the pattern is called So Faded and it's by Andrea Bowery. So there's a picture of the sweater and essentially as the pattern suggests, So Faded, it fades from color to color as you go down the sweater. So you have to change yarns. Other than that, it is just a basic pullover jumper sweater, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'll show you guys the yarns that I'm using. I just I just cast this on, I think, on Wednesday night. It wasn't last night. It must have been Wednesday night. So this is as far as I am. Not terribly interesting. So, the, oh, that's the bottom. So this is the neck up here. Like This is what's zooming around my neck. And um, it's knitted top down, so I'm going to be increasing. There's the sleeve, like, this part here will go like right here. You know what I mean? Like you guys will see it more once I get more knit on it. But yeah, so there's the first color that I'm putting in. So this is going to be in shades of blues and purples. So there's the first color. I'll show you guys the other colors. 
so then this color is going to fade into this color. So essentially when you do the fade, I don't want to give too much away, but you'll do like a row in this color, a row in this color, and you'll go back and forth for a certain amount of rows, and then you will drop this color completely and just continue on with this color. So they, you're not getting like a, a line of it's going, you know, from this color to this color, you will fade them into each other. So that's color one, color two. And then this color is going to fade into this color. But these are such different random yarns, but they will all go together as you, as the sweater goes. And then this color will fade into this color. I cannot wait. And this one has sparkle in it. So this is going to be towards the bottom of the sweater. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I think that this is all going to look spectacular together. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Really blues and purples and stuff like that. But yeah, I really, really like it. So I cannot wait. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much all the crafting I've gotten done. I got more work done in Garrett's, um, oh, that doesn't go in there, that goes over here, in Garrett's cross stitch, but I'm not going to pull all that out. I think this video has been long enough as it is. Um, real life stuff real quick before I let you guys go. Um, sorry, I was just looking at the time to see, excuse me, how long this clip is. And, um, holy cow, I do apologize. I'm, oh, sorry for the, the hiccups. Um, so last weekend I had some car issues. Uh, my check engine light came on on my vehicle. That's always fun. So I took it to uh, Midas or to the, uh, to the mechanic and he looked at it and I had it back on Monday. Um, I took it in Monday morning and I had it back by the end of the day. Um, and it was some valve or something like that. It was a rather expensive valve, but it was just a valve. So thankfully it wasn't anything more than that. Um, the rest of the week has been pretty uneventful, just work stuff, just extreme stress through work. Um, we don't know anything yet about dad. We find something out next week. Um, he has a appointment with the oncologist on Tuesday. So fingers crossed, please. My mom and my aunt and I have been talking like my dad's sister about kind of what's going on. And now he had his kidney out on the 24th of April. So if you guys are new to my channel, um, my dad has kidney cancer or had, has had kidney cancer. Um, they removed the kidney. And when they biopsied it, the tumor that was inside or whatever you want to call it was bigger than they anticipated. So they don't know if it's grown. Um, and they are checking now to see he's had to have a few tests done, whether or not it's is malignant, the word I'm looking for, where it's spread. Um, so it's pretty scary right now. Um, we were thinking, you know, once the kidneys out, it'll kind of be, you know, I mean, it's not going to be OK, but it's the worst part of it's done. But my mom and my aunt and I were talking. So like I said, he had the kidney out at the end of April. And then he saw the doctor in early May. Been the second week of May. And that's when they told, yeah, it was, it was the Tuesday before I went to Boston. And I was in Boston on the 9th or the 10th of May. So it was like that Tuesday. So like the first week of May. And then the week after that, he was sent for um, a, seat, a bone scan. Um, I guess they wanted to check to see if it had gone into his bones. And then the week after that, he had to have a CT scan um, of his whole body. And then last week, he had to have blood work done, and he's not getting his appointment until now. So it's been about a month since the initial appointment where they told him that we don't know this is bigger than we thought it was. So my mom, my aunt, and I were all talking, and we were saying, like, at first it was really, really scary to hear. You know what I mean? And it still is terrifying. Like, I'm still really, really scared. I'm going to be... Tuesday is not going to be a good day for me, I'll tell you, until I hear from my parents. But... My mom, my aunt and I were saying like, if they were that concerned, if they were that worried, A, they would have pushed these tests a lot faster. And B, because we've talked to other people, my mom's been talking to a lot of people who've been dealing with cancer and things like that, that they don't wait. They, they, if they think it's that, they will get you in for chemo or radiation or whatever it is to start some sort of treatment. They're not going to hold off on an entire month. Do you know what I'm saying? So not that we're trying to talk ourselves into it's going to be okay. But we're, you know, we're just hoping that it's going to be good news, essentially. So again, if you guys could just keep your fingers crossed for me, that would be great. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning of this video, that I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know what's going to be happening this summer. I, I was saying I, I, I'm hoping this is going to be a good summer. I'm hoping that, you know, whatever it is, whatever they find is going to be treatable and it's going to be okay. If they find anything at all, I'm hoping they don't, of course. Um, because it's my dad <laughs> and he needs to be around for a long, 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 long time. 
Um, and yeah, so that's it. Um, not to end on a low note because, you know, fingers crossed, happy, you know, let's, let's hope it's all good stuff. It's the weekend, you guys. Yay, it's the weekend. It's the beginning. It's the first, like, summer weekend. It's June. Let's hope for some good weather. Um, and yeah, anyway, guys, this video has gone on far too long. I will let you all go. Um, take care, happy reading, and I'll see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.